Hi guys, in this video we're going to cover a simple way to understand where your airplane is relative to a VOR. We are going to assume that you already know some basics about what a VOR is, but you just need some help interpreting what the instrument is telling you about where the airplane is relative to the VOR station. So let's get started. First off we'll define a couple of terms. So we're going to be talking about courses. And if we were to draw an example of a VOR here, and talk about let's say the 090 course, then we would draw a line going through the VOR in a 090 or due east direction. The first piece on the west side of the VOR, we're going to call that piece the 090 course to the station. The next piece will be on the east side of the course, and we're going to call this the 090 course from the station. The way to understand this is if you were to picture an airplane that were traveling along in the 090 or due east direction, if it were on the west side, the airplane would be going to the VOR station, but if it were on the east side and were traveling in a 090 direction, it would be traveling from the station. So that's where the terminology is coming from. Another piece of terminology that we'll use, so if we were to draw a line going perpendicular to our selected course of 090, we can divide up the area around the VOR into two parts. So on the west side of the VOR, we would say if the airplane is located anywhere to the west of this dashed line, we say the airplane is on the two side. Conversely, if the airplane is on the east side of that dashed line, we would say that the airplane is on the from side. Now for some basic components of the VOR indicator, on the lower left we have the OBS knob which stands for Omni Bearing Selector. We can twist this knob in order to select a particular course. In this scenario it looks like the selected course is going to be about 254 degrees. So next we have the To From indicator and this will tell you whether you're on the To side of the VOR or the From side of the VOR. So there could be another arrow pointed upwards that would indicate that the airplane is on the two side. But in the case we have here, the arrow is pointed down, which means we're on the from side. So to start with a simple example, let's draw a VOR indicator corresponding to the 090 course that we've drawn above. If the up arrow of the two from indicator were showing, this would indicate that we're somewhere on the two side of the VOR. However, if the down arrow were showing, this would indicate that we're somewhere on the from side of the VOR. Notice that nothing we've talked about so far has anything to do with the heading of the airplane. We're only talking about the position of the aircraft relative to the station, whether we're on the west side of the dashed line or on the east side of the dashed line. So what this effectively does is narrows down the location of the airplane into two out of the four quadrants. So if we label these quadrants, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, we see that the to from indicator tells us which two out of the four quadrants we could be in. Meaning if we're on the to side, we're in either quadrants 1 or 2. If we're on the from side, we're in either quadrants 3 or 4. So now the course deviation indicator is what is going to narrow us down from two quadrants to one quadrant. So understanding the course deviation indicator is probably the most tricky part of understanding VORs, but if you can learn this correctly, it's going to make your life so much easier. So the way we're going to interpret this is as follows. So we're going to draw another VOR indicator here with the 090 course we've been using. And this time we are going to have the needle deflected to the left. So this is really important. The way I want you to interpret this, if we were to look at what numbers would be on the left side of the instrument, we would have 90 minus 90, or 0 degrees equivalent to 360 degrees, which is due north. And on the right side of the instrument, it would be showing due south, or 180 degrees. So the way to interpret this now is if the needle is on the left side of the instrument, we say that the selected course is to R north. So if we take this back to the four quadrants from before, this VOR indication, the needle being on the north side of the instrument, tells us that we have to be in either quadrant 2 or in quadrant 4. Because those were the only two quadrants where a line drawn from the airplane 
to the 090 course line would be in a north direction. So again, this VOR indication should be interpreted as the needles on the north side of the instrument. So the course, the selected course of 090, is to the north of the airplane. So let's put this all together in one final example. So let's say in this VOR indicator, we've selected the 200 course. So the numbers that would be on the left and right sides of the VOR indicator, and by the way, in a real situation, obviously, you'll be able to just look at the VOR indicator and see this. Same thing goes for your written exam. But in this scenario, it's going to be 110 on the left side and 290 on the right side. Looking at what directions these would roughly be heading in, 200 corresponds to south southwest, 110 corresponds to east southeast, and 290 corresponds to west northwest. So, just in case you're not familiar with what the combination of directions means, when we say south southwest, for example, that would mean it's a direction in between a pure southwesterly direction, which is a course of 225. So between that and a pure southerly direction, or 180 degrees. Okay, so let's say that in this scenario, the needle is deflected to the left side of the instrument, and let's say that the to from indicator is showing a down pointing arrow, which would be from, as we discussed before. So now it's time to figure out where the airplane is relative to the VOR. It's really simple. So we just draw our VOR, and we draw the selected course, which in this case is 200, same direction as we drew before, south-southwest. Then if we drop that perpendicular line we were looking at before, we can break this down into two possibilities. So since we have a from indication, that tells us we're going to be on the from side. So this is 200 from, and this would be 2002. So we know we're in either this quadrant or this quadrant. Then the final step is to say, well, the needle is telling me that the selected course, the 200 selected course, is to R east southeast. So if the airplane were over here, well, clearly the selected course would in that case be to our west or northwest. So that can't be the answer. But if the airplane were anywhere in this quadrant, if we were to draw a line from any potential airplane position to our course, it would be in an east-southeasterly really direction. So that gives us our answer. So the airplane is located somewhere in here. Again, the most key part of interpreting this is to know that when the needle is deflected to this side of the instrument, that the course is to the east-southeast of the airplane. Do not think of this as left or right. Because let's say we had an airplane that was pointed in this direction here, and we tried to interpret the needle as saying that the course is to our left, because the needle is on the left side of the instrument. Well, clearly the course is not to our left in this case, it's to our right. But if we think of the course as being to our east-southeast direction, and we're sitting in our airplane looking at our heading indicator here, we see, okay, we're going northeast heading 020, and we know that an east-southeast direction is off to our right. In that case, if we were trying to intercept the course, we would properly turn in the right direction, to the right. This scenario is called reverse sensing, and generally we try to avoid it by selecting a course that's in the same general direction that the airplane is heading, but sometimes it's unavoidable. So that's why it's really important to interpret the VOR indicator the way we covered in this video. Don't think left-right, but instead think of what direction is the needle telling me that the course is relative from the airplane. Hopefully you found this method simple and understandable, but if you have any other questions, please comment below. And for a bunch more examples of applying this technique, check out our follow-on video. Thanks for watching.